we just want to thank you that it is the Sabbath. And we are just so, so grateful. You have been a good God. Better to us than we've been to ourselves. So Lord, may we not take anything for granted this morning. But may we worship you in spirit and in truth, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. You may be seated. I just want to bring you um, up to date on some happenings to some of our Sabbath school members. We have a few who are ill. We have some who have lost um, relatives. So there are some folks who are in mourning. So we are asking, please, that you remember all these people in your prayer. Our little friend, Michael, everybody knows Michael, correct? On last Sabbath, he was here. He was slated to do the scripture reading. It was clear that he was struggling. This is hindsight. <laughs> you know, we didn't recognize that at the time. This is hindsight. And um, he is in the hospital. So I know a lot of prayers have been going up for him. And we are asking that you continue to keep him in your prayers. Can you promise to do that? That's our Sabbath school member. Then we have another Sabbath school member, um, Brother Dwayne Lee, who lost a cousin, who was just like a brother to him. Young man, maybe not even 40 yet, in the prime of life, just ready to start living. So we go through a lot, but on the other hand, we still have so much to be grateful for. Let's just remember, as we start the lesson this morning until the children get here, to remember that we are to employ one lens through which we view the world, through which we see things, and that is through the great controversy. There's a battle going on between good and evil. And who is going to win? Who is going to win? Yes, we know how the story ends. But the question becomes, do we want to be a part of that story? Do we want to be among the victors? So that's the question this morning. The Sabbath school lesson says, wait on the Lord. Can we repeat the memory text together? It says, wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. We're going to repeat that. And it's from Psalm 27. Verse 14. Ready? Wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say on the Lord. If you love to wait, let me just see you raise your hands. All the people who love to wait? All right, okay, all right. So, her sister Gun says she has to wait. Do we all have to wait? Yes. But do we love waiting? Wouldn't it all depend? It depends on what you're waiting for, correct? And you have that anticipation. You're just, you just can't wait. Wait, you just can't wait. I use the word wait again. Sister Bonnet says, when we learn that it is in his time and his way, then we will wait. We will wait. You know, it's coming from an old English term that means to be in anticipation of something, looking forward to something, expecting something. Expecting something. Now, um, you said you have to wait. What does that mean? No, no, you heard what she said? In God's time.
All right, um, so we have to make that decision. Are we going to wait? So we have to look within the context of God's time plus our time. Two different things, right? What looks like a long time to us is just a blink of an eye to God. Sister Winifred, you were saying? All right, so Sarah, she's mentioning Sarah. Now, if you're 75 years old and somebody tells you you're going to have a child, what's, it, what's going to be your reaction? Okay. And now, if you are waiting 25 years more, that makes sense to you? Does that make sense? To you, to me. When we learn the ways of our Heavenly Father and we understand who He is, then we will learn to wait. Now, just wait. Just wait. So, you mentioned Sarah, all right, so, um, and Abraham. So, because they didn't wait, were there consequences? Long lasting consequences. Now, we are saying even unto this day, so when we make mistakes and we produce something that we should not have produced, that it was not, was it not in God's plan? Because you're telling me if I came about in the way other than what is prescribed biblically, then I'm a mistake. And am I to be blamed for some things that's going on? Do I have a say in whether I come here or not? So even though we say that, we know there are consequences to everything, we must be careful because we are talking to people. We are applying it to ourselves. Many of us came here by another way other than what was prescribed biblically. That's a fact. What does that say about us? We are still made in God's image, are we not? We must remember that. So even when people might devalue us and act as if they are better than we are, they are not. We are all equal before the cross. Can we keep that in mind? But even so, there was confusion, there was disruption. Whenever we do things our way, but let me ask you a question. How do you know that you're supposed to wait? How do you know you're supposed to wait? Can you discern God's voice? Can you hear him speak to you? Should, somebody said should be able to, okay? And Susie says we are to pray. All right? And when we pray, we tend to have a monologue. We say these long prayers, and then we get up off our knees and go on our way, and we don't wait to hear what God has to say, right? Hello? And so therefore, we make, we make mistakes. And if you look at it, the mistakes that we have all made has, have to do with waiting. You marry the wrong person. You marry the right person. You go to school when you should be going. Or you don't go because you should be doing something else. All has to do with waiting. But once we wait on the Lord, it's easy to say. You know, we have children who are not walking in the way. Are we tired to pray? We are so tired. We're just praying, 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 and we are not seeing the results we want. The Bible says, that, right, that he's come to give us life and to give it to us more abundantly also says that we can't even imagine the things that God has in store for us. So you might rush off and buy a home in Long Island, whereas the Lord was telling you to wait, but you want to stop paying rent, you know? And the Lord's, you know, giving you signs, but you still rush ahead 
and you still do it. And we pay for it because you know what? He might have had something so much bigger and better. We restrict God when we don't wait. That's all we're doing. We are preventing ourselves from receiving the blessings that he has in store for us. Now, when I go to the supermarket, I try to find the shortest line. But the irony of it is, even though it may be the shortest line, I'm telling you, 99% of the time, I end up waiting. And then I'm getting upset. So what I'd started to do was to carry a book to read. But now, you know, we're not reading the books now, right? So I have my phone. So I just read something. And sometimes people engage me in conversation. I really don't want to be talking to you when I'm waiting online because I don't want to wait. You know what I'm saying? But may God grant us the patience so we will not do what Sarah and Abraham did. We will not make our own way. Now, it doesn't mean we are not to participate, right? Because nowhere did I read that um, she was impregnated by a spirit. So she still had to participate in the process, but it was on God's own time. Yes. And as Sister um, Barnett said, we have to come into a relationship with God. So wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen your heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. So if you are to be of good courage, what does that mean? Of good courage. Are you supposed to give up? All right, let's talk a little bit about Noah. What was Noah waiting on for 120 years? Okay, rain for what? To do what? He was preaching in the meantime, so he was active, right? But what was he actually waiting on? God's what? God's judgment. God's judgment. So was he really waiting to see who would be lost and who would be saved? He was doing what God directed him to do. Building an ark for 120 years. And the spirit of prophecy says that some of the people who were assisting him, were they saved? So during your waiting period, during my waiting period, I can devote time to God and to his ministry. But then I can't wait anymore. I'm not anticipating his coming anymore. Or I think I have time. And so off I go. And then I'm lost. So what does that tell us that we ought to do and how we ought to be? Come in, children. Come, come, come. What does that tell us? Come on, somebody. Come on, come on, come on. What does that tell us? Looking at Noah's example, what does that tell us about the human condition? Yes, now we know about the human condition. What should we do and how should we be? We should be active. We should be patient. We should be consistent. Don't stop. I'm sure there are people who are laughing, right? Sorry? Yes, remain polite and respectful. Don't laugh at people. <laughs> you know, stay focused on the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what we need to do. So there's a lesson or many, many lessons in there um, for us to pull uh, together and um, wait on the Lord. Be of good courage and he shall strengthen your heart. As they get ready, what about the ten virgins? That's another lesson in waiting. Come on, ten virgins. Were they all godly people? I noticed they were virgins. All right, so all godly people. 
They were all waiting for one thing, correct? Waiting for the bridegroom. And here we go. What happened to one of the group? They ran out. And the other group had and had extra oil. So what does that tell us about our waiting period? Preparation is necessary. What else? Patience. Okay. And notice they all went to sleep, right? Hello? So there comes a time when everybody might be at a certain point where they need to be revived. But they had that extra oil which allowed them to be. So when the bridegroom came, came unexpectedly because we don't know God's timing, do we? So may God help us to be always ready to be prepared as we actively wait, as we occupy until he comes. May we not go off in our own direction, but may we listen to God because he has things in store for us, things that we can't even begin to imagine or think. Would you like to be recipients of God's blessings? Congregation, would you like to be recipients of God's blessings? Yes. yes. Amen. 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 Children, are we ready? Reporting news from South Asia. Good morning and happy Sabbath. Welcome to Goshen Temple Children's Ministry Television Broadcast. I am Anike Dawkins, your TV host. If this is your first time here, we'd like to thank you for coming and we hope that you'll be comfortable and enjoy our presentation. The cross is the only way to salvation and the cross gives a new purpose to life. The cross shows the seriousness of our sin but it also shows the immeasurable love of God. Sin was conquered on the cross. South Asia is a beautiful continent, and it's important that we relate to our very own Adventist friends. Let us visit with David and friends in the fields working for Jesus. We will now sing 163 at the cross at the cross.
to. I will now pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for waking us up this morning. And as we have a respectful communion service day, I ask you, Lord, that you may pr protect us and bless us. In your name I pray. Amen. Amen. We will now s over and back to studio on the cake. Now for the news in details. The Seventh-day Adventist Church in Southern Asia has a membership of around 1.2 million people, worshiping in more than 7,000 churches. India has the largest membership of this division. It oversees the work of spreading the saving truths and gospel in these countries. The Adventist Church in India operates nine educational entities and 12 health institutions. Let us pause to send love and blessings to Michael, who is in the hospital. On, be on behalf of us all, we wish you well and hope that you will feel better soon. Now, let's take a short break. Be delighted with melod melodious singing. I will early seek the Savior. I will early seek the Savior. I will learn of him each day. I will follow in his footsteps. I will walk the narrow way. For he loves me, oh yes, he loves me. Jesus loves me, this I know. Jesus loves me, died to save me. This is why I love him so. Standing at the doorway of escape from every sin. I will knock for he has promised he will hear and let me in for he loves me oh yes he loves me Jesus loves me this I know Jesus loves me died to save me this is why I love him so
Welcome back to the second section of the news. Your health is one of the most important things in your life. That's why today we have with us Dr. Dawkins with Health Talk. Hi, I am Dr. Micaiah Dawkins, and I'm a pediatrician, and I'm here to talk about asthma. Asthma may be caused from difficulty, breathing, chest pain, coughing, and wheezing. Most times, it may be serious and require children to get oxygen and even to be hospitalized. Signs to look for are shortness of breath, chest tight or pain, wheezing, trouble sleeping, coughing. In most cases, my patients use this pump along with the spacer. Ch children and babies use this pump along with the spacer to use, so use it for four pumps for, for five minutes. Thank you and have a lovely Saba. Back to you, Anike. Kids under construction, the Lord is not finished with us yet. We are more than just accidents without cause. We are more than just anguish and pain. Kenneth will remind us that God is working in this construction site. Take us back to this quarter, please. We thank God that he has taught us truth through his words. We know the major activity in Sabbath school is the study of the God's words. Well, we have come to the end of the quarter wherein each week we studied a new lesson. And so this morning, we will just look at the gems we received that will help us to stay close to Jesus. The first three lessons emphasize God's great love. We saw how he stepped out into in darkness and created a beautiful world with only his spirit and his words. He made all thing, all the things of nature. Don't you just love the chirping of the birds and the sweet fragrance of the flowers? He made us special in his very image. Then he gave us something special. I can imagine God saying to himself, my special creation needs a special gift, so he gave us the Sabbath. Do you love the Sabbath and the things we do in it? Thank God for the Sabbath day. Amen. Hiding from God when the crocodile missed dinner and the fire that didn't go out reminds us that when we disobey God, he does not throw us away, but as long as we are willing to connect with him again. He restores his relationship with us in ways such as bringing Adam and Eve out of hiding, preserving the life of Moses, and speaking to him from the fire that didn't go out. God won back his special creation. In the following three lessons, God's gentle prompting of Pharaoh through Moses could not change his stubborn heart even after nine miraculous signs. After death in the house of every Egyptian, Pharaoh's confession that God is Lord of all the earth and set his people free. As human, not keeping our minds on God's power, how soon do we forget? God's people who Pharaoh swore he would never let go freed them. In going to the place God promised them, they thirst for water. Did they trust God's power? Instead, they blamed Moses for not having water to drink. They forgot how God miraculously freed them from slavery. 
Did we forget all the good blessings when some when something seems difficult? Just remember what he has done for us, knowing he will do it again. In the last four lessons, we see Jesus and his role in bringing us closer to God, closer than we could have ever been by ourselves. Through this love, he deals with us on the level God made us. We see Peter's transformation into Fisher of Ben, the change in the mind of Matthew, the tax collector, and yes, the little children. When Jesus' friends sent them away, he called out and said, let the children come for they will be with me in my kingdom. Then there was Zacchaeus so little that the children thought he was a child too. That rich tax collector, after he met Jesus, left off cheated and was still little in statue, but this time stepped out into life with a great big heart. Yes, Jesus loves people and died and rose for us. What our Father in heaven and Jesus our Savior have done for these, he is waiting to do the same for us. Won't you trust in them today? Luke 23, verse 34 states, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. What a world, sinful indeed. Fathers, mothers, sisters, brothers, members, we are all attacked. We need forgiveness. Forgive us, Lord. Give us a chance to share what others experience around the world. It's time for World News. What's up? Game later? Don't think so. But why? All of a sudden, my mother keeps talking about mission, and she wants me to be with it. Mission? What's that? Well, they talked about church. Well, they talked at the church about mission fields. Yes, but what is mission fields? Some kind of Christian thing you're supposed to do so people can learn about Jesus. Isn't that for grown ups? Wait, I think I heard about that. You're supposed to go to some faraway place to tell people about Jesus. That's not for us kids, though. I told my mother the same thing. She said there are lots of people who do not know about Jesus. She said as long you, she said as long as you can do something kind to someone, you're doing missionary work for Jesus. Anyway, we can still play later, right? Nah. There's a lady down the block. She told my mom that she's lonely. What can you do for an old lady anyway? I went to her house before in Redfair. That's boring. Nah, she was smiling. I know I made her happy. Mom said because I did something special for her, I was being a missionary. I promised the lady I will come back to her, so I have to go. She said she has no friends. I want to tell her Jesus loves her and she can talk to him by praying. You saw me when I was praying at school, right? That was embarrassing, bro. Every kid was watching you weird. I know. One of them asked me if I, what, what, what I was doing. When I told her, she asked if I can teach her how to pray. I told my mom, and she said that was great missionary work. Wait, it's that easy? Do I have a convert? Looks like it. Then we could partner together in mission. Remember what you said about going to far places? We can do that too. What? That's a lot of money. Not really. We can save up our money, and when the 13th Sabbath comes, we give it at church for mission offerings. 13th Sabbath offering is used for special projects all around the world such as building schools and churches so that people could come and learn about Jesus and his love. This way we can be missionaries here at home and in faraway places. Yes, mom. Okay, tomorrow. A generous person will prosper. 13 Sabbath offerings have helped the Adventist churches hospitals, clinics, schools, and other ministries around the world. We will participate in the giving and sharing of this activity now.
Please stand up for prayer. Dear Lord, thank you. Dear Lord, thank you for these generous people who have given us offering. Lord, I pray that this money that you have provided shall be multiplied and given and given to those who, have, who are in need. Lord, I pray that those who have given, their needs shall be multiplied and they shall have plenty in you, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Now for the final segment of our broadcast. Brother David will summarize lessons from the Cornerstone Division. Good morning, church, and happy Sabbath. Today I will be summarizing the Cornerstone lessons. This year's first quarter was about kings and prophets and what they did in the time of the Old Testament. What I learned from one of the lessons were, was how the Moabites, Ammonites, and some Munites came to war against King Jehoshaphat. King Jehoshaphat told the people that a vast army was coming against them from Edom, from the other side of the Dead Sea. After he told the people that a vast army was coming, he went to inquire the Lord and proclaim a fast for all the people of Judah. When the people of Judah got together, they sought help from the Lord, and they indeed came from every town in Judah to seek King Jehoshaphat. He assembled all the people of Judah and Jerusalem at the temple of the Lord in front of the new court courtyard and said this, Lord, the God of our ancestors, are you not the God who is in heaven? The men from Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir's territories did not allow Israel to invade when they came, upon, when they came from Egypt because they didn't want the people to turn away and be destroyed by God. Again, King Jehoshaphat said to the people, all the men of Judah, with their wives and children and little ones, stood there before, stood there before the Lord. In conclusion, this tells us whenever we get discouraged or afraid over something, we should always remember that the battle is not ours, but God's. Ding dong, ding dong, ding dong. Our trivia question. Anyone from the audience may answer. How many of each animal did Moses bring into the ark? Yes? Correct. While sometimes we feel rejected and alone, keep faith that Jesus will return. On live track, Micaiah will take us out of studio.
above all kingdoms, above all thrones, above all wonders the world has ever known, above all wealth and treasures of the earth. There's no way to measure what your worth. Rejected and alone Like a rose Trampled on the ground You took the fall And thought of me Above all Above all powers, above all kings, above all nature and all created things, above all wisdom and all the ways of man, you are here before the world began. Above all kingdoms, above all thrones, above all wonders the world has ever known, above all wealth and treasures of the earth, there's no way to measure what you're worth. Crucified, laid behind a stone You live to die, rejected and alone Like a rose, trampled on the ground You took the fall, and thought of me Above all Crucified Laid behind a stone You live to die Rejected and alone Like a rose Trampled on the ground You took the fall and thought of me above all like a rose trampled on the ground you took the fall and thought of me above all Our Bite of the Week is brought to you by Goshen Temple Children's Ministry Department. Do have an amazing Sabbath. Out of studio, I was Unike, your television host today. Bye. Shall we stand for prayer? Let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for this wonderful Sabbath day. We thank you for Jesus who died on Calvary's cross to save us from our sins. And as we celebrate his great love and sacrifice for us, 
May our hearts be humbled and be touched, and may each of us here today really come to the realization of what Jesus has really done for us. We thank you in a marked way for our youth, our young people who have done so wondrously this morning. We pray that you will continue to nurture them and lead them in the way and help us as their um, guide that we will live so that they also will see and know how to live for you. Grant us today the blessings that we are here for. And as we worship you, forgive us of our sins, cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We thank you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. We just want to thank the children for their performance this morning. Uh, I think they did very well considering. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes, they did well. They, they took over in the last minute where some children could not be here because um, they had other engagements or were not well. Michael is still in the hospital, so we have to keep him in our prayers. So, and remember the children always. When you pray, we need you to pray for them. Uh, this brings us to the end of our Sabbath school program for today. So uh, have a great Sabbath, the rest of the Sabbath, and we'll see you next week, same time, same place. Thank you. Good morning and happy Sabbath. Welcome to the Goshen Temple of Seventh-day Adventists, where we share truth and we share love. Here are the announcements and or reminders for today, March 30th, 2024. Board meeting will be next week, Saturday, April 6th. More details will be emailed tomorrow. Save the date and be prepared to invite our neighbors, family, and friends that are not of the faith to our two-week outreach evangelism series starting April 20th and ending on the 4th of May. Beginning April 6th, 2024, we will be going back to individual classes and there will be four classes. Your Sabbath school is kindly asking that you prepare to come out early so that we can fellowship, share, and study as a family. Community Guest Day is April 6th, a good time to start inviting friends and family. Join the adult Sabbath school lesson study every morning from 7 a.m. to 8 a.m. and conducted by Pastor Carl Ming on Zoom. The meeting ID is 824-5058-7151. And the passcode is 258192. On March 16th, the young people of Goshen showed up in the city. Over the past few weeks, the youth received donations for feminine products to help our women in the community. Goshen Temple contributed over 100 feminine products, and we also contributed bread from our community service pantry, along with some travel kits. Some of us also went to help pack materials for the migrants in our community. And let's not forget our adventurers. They were on Flatbush Avenue, sharing truth and sharing love. Thank you for always supporting our young people and helping us give back to our community. From Sister Raquel Wells and her AY team. Nine, two. Sisters Eula Wilson and Shirley Wills, younger brother Aubrey Wills, passed away on Monday. Please add our sisters and their family to our prayer list. Also add Sister Peggy Smith and her family to the list for the loss of her sister who passed away in Jamaica. And we ask that you continue to pray for the Desirvier and Goshen families as we mourn the loss of Elder Simon Desirvier. Thank you for joining us. Have a great Sabbath day. Amen. Good morning, church. Uh, this is the first reading to accept Sister Betty Gorber and Merlene Bonnet as members of the Goshen Temple of Seventh-day Adventists on Profession of Faith. Again, this is the first reading. Thank you.
Can we all stand? online with us we praise God that you're here there is a Robert in the house Robert is in the house today shoot up your hand like this Robert if you're in the house somewhere I know you're here ah come on let's give Robert a round of applause Robert I was told that you're from Jamaica is that true and you left Jamaica and came to worship with us today we praise God for you we praise God for you something like that he says amen Give him a round of applause. And then there is also Lois in the building with us on today. Lois. Where is Lois? Lois. Lois. Come on, Lois. Do this with one hand or something. Lois is in the building. I think Lois is from Trinidad. I'm not sure. Lois. Is it Lois? Where is she? She probably hearing me looking for her and she's not saying anything. I'm going to find Lois before the day is over. Do we have any other visitors in the house with us on today? Do we have any other visitors in the house with us today? No other visitors yet? Where, where, are, where are they? Okay, come on, wave your hands. Come on, give her a round of applause. What's your name? Could you shout out your name real quickly for us? L L Loris? Lois? Dolores? Oh, I thought they said Lois. Dolores. I'm sorry, Dolores. We praise God for you. We praise God for all those of us that are watching online, our adventurers are not here on today. They are gone to Massachusetts to participate in a very special program. We're going to continue to pray for them. We're praying today for Brother Dwayne Lee. If you notice, he's not here with us in the praise team today. He lost his cousin just this morning, and we're lifting him, lifting him up in prayer. We're also praying for young Brother Michael Allen, who is in the hospital even right now as we speak. We're going to pray that the God of heaven will continue to give him strength. We're praying for um, Sister Garvey. We're praying for 
um, Elder Morgan and his family and all the other members that we have that are healing at this time. And just rest assured that we're working on a program by God's grace and his mercies to make sure that God's people are okay. Amen, everybody? I want you to bow your heads with me real quickly as we thank God for his sovereignty and thank him for today and just get ready for what God is going to do in the building on today. We're going to get ready for it by his grace and by his mercies. Let us pray. Father, in the name of your son, Jesus, we thank you so much for your grace, for your mercies, for your goodness that lingers with us. And as we're in your house on today, God, we pray that your spirit will be manifested in this house. We want to ask you, God, that even as we come to this table, that this encounter will be a personal encounter, that your name will be exalted and established, that your kingdom will be built. For those of us in the house, God, that are grieving, either because of the loss of a loved one or because of ailment, physical ailment, God, we pray that you will continue to keep us. We want to lift up Dwayne Lee and the family as you continue to keep them during this moment of grief. We want to lift up Sister Des Rivera again before you. Young Michael that is in the hospital, Sister Garvey. We pray, God, that you will continue to keep them. That you will accept this praise that we bring today in this Holy Communion, the act of humility that you will give us a clean sheet in every corner or crevice of our lives as we get ready to celebrate. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen and amen. All right, so listen now, this is going to work, everybody. We're going to move into our um, foot washing exercise right now, and I'm going to explain to you how it's going to go. It is going to be a 20-minute process. That's what it's going to be. So when you go out the door, 20 minutes after that, you're coming back into the door. And so we've already given our deacons and our deaconesses instruction that today is not about surgical procedures, cosmetics, or hygiene. Today is the act of humility and a miniature baptism, and we're not going to do that for eternity. So all the men are, somebody behind me said, amen. All the men are going to go upstairs at the singing of the last verse of our hymn of worship on today. I think that is 163. Alas, and did my Savior bleed, and did the sovereign die? And immediately after we're done with the last verse, we ask the men, men to go right ahead. They're waiting on you upstairs and the ladies to go to their regular lunch fellowship hall. And we're coming back here for an amazing time in Jesus in 20 minutes. Let's go as we sing our At hymn. At last sent it, my Savior bleed, and in my sovereign time. Would he devote that sacred head for sinners such as I? At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light, and the burdens of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith I received my sight, and now I am happy all the day. All right, we're going to ask the men to go upstairs to the fellowship hall upstairs and the ladies to go quickly to the, um, to the fellowship hall that's downstairs.
Praise my soul, the King of heaven, to his feet thy tribute bring, ransomed, healed, restored, forgiven, who like thee his praise should sing. Praise him, praise him, alleluia, praise the everlasting King. Praise him for his grace and favor to our fathers in distress. Praise him still the same forever, slow to chide and swift to bless. Praise him, praise him, alleluia, glorious in his faithfulness. Oh, 
there of oh, the masters appearing but signs all foretell that the moment is nearing when he will return it's a promise most cheering but we know not the Until that time, this is what we'll do. We'll watch and we'll pray with our hands streamed and burning. We'll work and we'll wait till the master's returning. We'll sing and rejoice every moment is a need. But we don't know Is Jesus my Lord a wonderful Savior to me? 
He hideth my soul in the cleft of the rock where rivers of pleasure I see. Shadows a dry, thirsty land. He hideth my life in the depths of his love and covers me there with his hand and covers me there. A wonderful Savior is Jesus, my Lord. He taketh my burden away. He holdeth me up, and I shall not. Be moved. He giveth me strength as my day. He hideth my soul in the cleft of the rock that shadows a dry, thirsty land.
behold the Lamb, the precious Lamb of God, born into sin that I may live again, the precious Lamb of God. Now behold the Precious Lamb of God, born into sin that I may live again, the precious Lamb of God. Holy, holy is the Lamb, the precious Lamb of God. Why you love me so, Lord, I shall never know The precious Lamb of God Holy, holy is the Lamb The precious Lamb of God Why you love me so, Lord, I shall never know the precious Lamb of God. Thank you. Thank you for the Lamb. The precious Lamb of God. Because of your grace I can finish this race. The precious Lamb of God. Thank you for the Lamb, the precious Lamb of God. Because of your grace, I can finish this race, the precious Lamb of God. Now behold, now behold the Lamb. Precious Lamb of God, born into sin that I may live again, the precious Lamb of God. Holy, holy is the Lamb, the precious Lamb of God. Why you love me so, Lord, I shall never know The precious Lamb of God Thank you Thank you for the Lamb The precious Lamb of God Because of your grace I can finish this race the precious Lamb of God. Thank you. Thank you for the Lamb. The precious Lamb of God. Because of your grace, I can finish this race. The precious Lamb of God. Lamb of God, you, you loved me. 
me so, Lord, I shall never know the precious Lamb of God. Holy, holy is the Lamb, the precious Lamb of God. Why you love me so, Lord, I shall never know. of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you that the Lord Jesus the same night in which he was betrayed took bread and when he had given thanks 
he breaked it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. Let us pray. Father, here we are again to partake in this solemn service. We thank you that at this time, this season, we are reminded that you died for each and every single one of us. We want to thank you for what the bread represents, your broken body, which was broken on our behalf. As we partake today, may we truly be blessed, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Bread of heaven sent down from glory. Many things you were on earth, a holy king, a carpenter. You are the living work, say, bread of heaven, sent down from glory. Many things you were on earth, a holy king, a carpenter. You are the living awesome word. ruler, awesome ruler. Gentle Redeemer, Gentle Redeemer, God with us, God with us, the living truth, and what a friend we have in you. You are, you are an awesome ruler, awesome ruler, Gentle Redeemer. God with us, the living truth, and what a friend we have in you. You, you are, are an awesome word. ruler, awesome ruler, gentle redeemer. God with us, the living truth, and what a friend we have. In you, you, you are, are an awesome word. ruler, awesome ruler, gentle redeemer, God with us, the living truth, and what a friend we have in you, you are the living Jesus, word. Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, that's what we call you. Major born, but on a tree, you died to save humanity. You are the living Jesus, word. Jesus, 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 that's what we call you. Major born, but on a tree, you died to save humanity. You are the living Jesus, word. Jesus, 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 that's what we call you. Major born, but on a tree, you died to save humanity. The tea. You are the living Jesus, word. Jesus, 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 that's what we call you. Major born, but on a tree, you died to save humanity. You are the living Jesus, word. Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, that's what we call you. Major born, but on a tree, you died to save humanity. You are 
the living Jesus, word. Jesus, 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 Jesus. That's what we call you, Major Born, but on a tree, you died to save humanity. You are the living Jesus, word. Jesus, 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 Jesus. That's what we call you, Major Born. You died to save humanity. You are the living Jesus, word. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. That's what we call you, Major Born, but on a tree. You died to save humanity. You are the living Jesus, word. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. That's what we call you. Major born, but on a tree. You died to save humanity. You are the living Jesus, word. Jesus, 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 Jesus. That's what we call you, Major Born, but on a tree, you died to save humanity. You are the living Jesus, word. Jesus, 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 Jesus. That's what we call you, Major Born. But on a tree, you died to save humanity. You are the living Jesus, word. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. That's what we call you, Major Born. But on a tree, you died to save humanity. Jesus, 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 that's what we call you, Major Born, but on a tree, you died to save humanity, you are the living Jesus, word, Jesus, 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 that's what we call you, Major Born, but on the tree, you died to save humanity, you are the living word. Come the fount of Every blessing to my heart to sing thy praise. Streams of mercy ever ceasing, humble songs of loud and praise. Teach me. Jesus 
sought me when a stranger wandering from the fold of God, he to rescue me from danger interposed his precious blood. Oh, to grace, how great a debtor daily I'm constrained to be. Let thy goodness like a fetter bind me closer still to thee. Prone to Blood of Jesus is always universal. And because of that, the Seventh day Adventist Church practice what is called open communion, which means as long as you are a candidate for heaven, you can participate in this symbol of God's grace and his mercies. While we don't embrace the doctrines of transubstantiation which teaches that this piece of unleavened bread literally becomes the flesh of Jesus we embrace the fact that when we partake of it today then we're part partaking in a sacrifice that Jesus Christ has made for us has everyone in the building be served This means that everyone has been served. Thank you so much. This unleavened bread represents the broken body of Jesus Christ. I will invite the people of God to now partake of it in silent meditation. Let the church say amen. After the same manner, also he took the cup when he stopped saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and think, drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till I come. Till he come. Shall we bow our heads, please, and close our eyes? Eternal and gracious Father, again we come to you 
We are thankful for the invitation that you have given to your people that we are to come and eat. Thank you for this spilled blood. The Bible is clear as regards to the importance of the blood. Many songs, themes of many songs. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. So as we partake of symbolically of your blood, we pray that indeed it will apply to our lives, that we will be strengthened as we leave this communion table. And more than anything, as we look forward, O oh God, to the time when you'll gather all of your people from the four corners of the earth to sup with you. And the Bible says that when he shall see the travail of his soul, he shall be satisfied. May all of us in here, O oh God, be part of that great set of people who will greet you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The blood that Jesus shed for me way back on Calvary the blood that gives me strength from day Today it will never lose its power. The blood that Jesus shed for me way back on Calvary of oh, blood that gives me strength from day to day it will never lose its power oh the blood that Jesus shed for me way back on Calvary oh the blood that gives me strength from day to For it reaches to the highest mountains, and it flows to the lowest valley, the blood that gives me strength from day. Jesus 
shed for me. Way back on Cal Calvary, the blood that gives me strength from day to day, it will never lose its power. The blood that Jesus sheds for me Way back, way back on Cal Calvary Oh, the blood that gives me strength from day
blood that gives me strength from day. We're holding in our hands the symbol of the blood of Jesus. Somebody say amen to that. It never loses its power. What can wash away our sins? No, no, I didn't hear you. What can wash away our sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. I'm so glad today that Jesus chose to shed his blood for you and me. We know we don't deserve it. Somebody say amen to that too. But he did it anyway. I'm thankful that while he was on the cross, you and I were on his mind. We serve a mighty God. Has anyone been overlooked?
say amen. Amen. say amen. amen. Let the church say amen. amen. In the pew that is before you, the manufacturers have done an excellent job of creating some little areas with some little receptacle holders. We're going to ask you to go ahead and to put your glasses in them right now if you still have them in your hands. Because at some point in time, you're going to need your hands. I praise God today for the fact that there is still power in the blood of Jesus. I don't have much to do for the rest of this day, so I'll say it a thousand times until you hear what I'm saying. I say, I praise God today, there is still power in the blood of Jesus. Sister Anna Marie is somewhere in the building. I don't see her, but I'm going to find her soon. If she's here, where is she? Could you just wave your hands just a little bit? Could you just jump up on your feet real quickly? For those of you who were not here on last week, Sister Anna Marie is a demonstration to the fact that there is still power in the blood Amen. of Jesus. Amen. 
I don't know who is hearing me in this building on today, but not only is there power in the blood of Jesus, but where sin abounds, grace much more abounds. And you can sit down and look as cute as you want to look right now. If the truth be told, we all were messing up this week. And Jesus Christ has allowed us to come boldly to the throne of grace on today. Here is why I celebrate this moment with such great joy and such animosity and such, I'm sorry, animation. And such charisma and such excitement. I celebrate this moment because I don't have to go into the wild and catch a lamb or a sheep and bring it through the building so that everybody know how much I messed up all week long. The good news is that the veil of the temple has been rent from the top to the bottom. Which means it doesn't matter how much I messed up all week long. I can still come boldly to the throne of grace. Yes. Yes. And so I'm trying to get somebody into the attitude yes. Yes. of just understanding on today that the God of heaven created this moment. Yes. So you can understand that the sins of yesterday don't have to go into tomorrow by God's grace and his mercies. I'm going I'm to I'm I'm switch over if you can. Okay, all right. I'm going to work right here until awesome. Wonderful, wonderful. I'm trying to get you to understand that the God of heaven has created a situation so much that in the participation of the miniature baptism and the act of humility and the broken body and spilled blood of Jesus, you can come boldly to grace on today. And you can walk away from this place celebrating something that the rest of the world can't celebrate. Because the difference between us and them is when they mess up, they have nowhere to go. But when we mess up, we can run to the foot of the cross. I wish you were here with me in this house on today. And so for the next 10 minutes, I want to release my elders and pastors because I don't want to wear them out. Let's give them a round of applause in the house on today. Let's give our deacons a round of applause in the house on today. Are you, are you ready for me? Yes, they are. Uh, let's give our deacons and our deaconesses a round of applause on today. Let's give our praise and worship team a round of applause on today. For those of you who brought your Bibles with you on today, I would wish if you could just grab them in your hands real quickly. I'm not going to give you much work on today because my runway is short. I've got a, an abbreviated runway on today and I must soar in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen, everybody. So grab your Bible devices and turn with me to the book of Philippians. You can say it with me, Philippians chapter 2. Is the book in which we're going today, Philippians chapter 2. Grab your Bible devices real quickly, Philippians chapter 2. And I want to lift up just a few verses in your hearing on this afternoon, Philippians chapter 2. Say that with me. Y'all don't sound like a group of people that has just been forgiven. You sound like you're still planning to go home with your stuff. When you should leave it at the foot of the cross today. I want some folks to walk away from this room feeling vindicated. And I'm trying to tell you that this is why the devil hates you so much. He hates you so much because you can come to this table today and you can go home knowing that yesterday was yesterday. And today is a brand new day. Do I have one worshiper in the house today? Just one person. That's not too... Uh, comfortable to just shake in Jesus name real excited that the God of heaven has been good to you Philippians chapter 2 I want to start at verse number 5 on today we have these words let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus who 
being in the form of God thought it not robbery to be equal with God but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore, God also hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. The Palestine sun beats mercilessly upon the strange procession as they march through the gates of the sacred city. Three prisoners, two of them, company of the insurrectionists, the other a teacher of Nazareth. The government would have gladly released him, but politics was stronger than principle. As a result, he was delivered to the angry mob to be beaten. When this was not enough, the cry, crucify him, swells to a mighty crescendo, catching up with more and more voices each time in its spell. Voices the very day before were shouting the praise of a man they now wanted to crucify. But such was the contagion of violence, and now across rough, rugged, cruel, an unkind was placed on each prisoner to carry to his grave. The battered and bleeding and bruised shoulders of Jesus fainted beneath the load of sin and shame. Who will help him? Someone must, but not a man in that hypnotic crowd would lend a helping hand. Simon of Serene, the black man coming from a far country, the cried out, must Jesus bear the cross alone and all the world go free? There is a cross for you and there is a cross for me. And he bent his arms and assisted Jesus in carrying the cross. But Paul is saying to us today that when we come to this table, we should not just come to it because we do this one time every three months. But we should come to the table knowing full well that when you put the blood of Jesus and the body of Jesus together, you end up with the mind of Christ. And when you leave this building on today, you're not leaving with your own mind. You're leaving with the mind of Christ. And so what he's done for us, he begins to dig down in the mind of Christ. And he said, who being in the form of God thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation. Do I have one worshiper in the building today that is excited about the fact that the sovereign God, the everlasting father, was willing to make himself of no reputation? Do I got one person in the building that just want to say thank you Jesus for making yourself of no reputation the important thing to me is that we're always trying our best to increase and improve our reputation but as good as you get in order for Jesus to dwell among us he still had to make himself of no reputation I'm a preach to myself in this building if I have to preach to myself in this building on today and so you want to understand that Jesus had a godlike reputation he had a reputation to step out in the morning and say let there be light and the darkness gathered up its curtail and moved away into oblivion he has a reputation that when he moves into the sanctuary smoke fill the building in which he's moving he has a reputation that when he begins to speak 
winds and mountains move out of their places and he has to come down to planet earth and he can't come with that reputation because the minute he set foot on planet earth with that reputation everything begins to crumble at his feet and so he said i'm not trying to destroy everything i'm trying to save everything and in order for him to do that church he had to make himself of no reputation and he made himself of so much no reputation i know that's not english but you won't get it on your way home he made himself of so much no reputation that when he came down to planet earth they didn't even know that it was jesus christ that had come can i help you one time real quickly the people were asking moses when they said we want to see who jesus is and Moses went up into the mountain and he said God the people want to know who you are they, they, they've never seen you before and God says Moses I can't do that and Moses said I don't know what to explain to the people because one minute you're moving in a pillow of cloud and the next minute you're moving in a ball of fire and the people want to know whether you're ball of fire or pillow of cloud and so they just don't know what you are so they want to see what you look like and God said to Moses that's not a good idea Moses and Moses says why is it not a good idea and God says if they see me they're gonna die matter of fact if you see me you're gonna die matter of fact if you see me and they see you after you see me they still gonna die but I'm willing to strike a compromise with you Moses how many of you in this room today are excited that you serve a God that is willing to strike a compromise with you in the house the God of the God said to Moses I'm gonna put you in the cleft of a rock and I'm gonna cover you with my hands and I'm gonna pass by this rock and when I pass by this rock I'm gonna allow you to see just the back portion of me and the Bible helps us to understand that when he passed by and Moses saw just the back of God there was so much glory on him that when he came down off of the mountain he had to wear a veil because the people couldn't look at him after he saw just the back of God and I'm like my good God have mercy if they just saw the back of Jesus and couldn't look at Moses face can you imagine if they were able to look in the face of God and if he had come that way the minute he was developed in mary's bosom there would be so much light on planet earth that everybody that he came to save would have dropped down dead on the ground but the bible said he made himself of no reputation and I praise God that he did so much so that one time he was preaching and some folks said who is this that is creating some raucous and they said it's a carpenter's son and they're like where is he from and somebody said he came out of Nazareth and they laughed and said oh please can any good thing come out of Nazareth and when they said that I wanted Jesus to answer them I wanted to say to them Jesus tell them where you come from let them know that you are from everlasting to everlasting and tell them while they're asking the question the breath that they're using belongs to you the lungs in their body belongs to you I wish that Jesus would have just stepped in the argument and say let me answer your question you're asking if I have any good thing can come out of Nazareth but for your information I didn't come out of Nazareth Nazareth came out of me but he humbled himself y'all he became obedient unto death even the death of the cross and Paul said he took upon him the form of a servant not the form to serve but the form of a servant which which is different from choosing to serve because when you choose to serve you choose who you want to serve how you want to serve where you want to serve when you want to serve and why you want to serve but when you choose to serve you have no this no 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 you have no say in the process that's why when he was in the garden of Gethsemane way down with the weight of this world's sin he was able to say it's not my I will but thy will be done 
So when the apostle Paul said he became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross, I feel like saying that three times. He became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. I feel like saying it one more time. He became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. And so they're saying to me, pastors, that the theologians are saying that Paul is trying to insinuate that Jesus didn't necessarily have to die on the cross because one drop of the blood of Jesus was enough to atone for the sins of this world. But I heard somebody say all the way to Calvary, he went for me. And I came in this room today to tell 19 worshipers in the name of Jesus that the God that we serve would stop at nothing until you were saved that's why he shed blood from the crown of his head down to the sole of his feet he shed blood from seven different locations in his body because he wanted to make sure that you're covered from the crown of your head down to the sole of your feet all right y'all still looking at me strange so pull out your calculators quickly and let's add them up one time they pressed the crown of thorns on his head and when they pressed it down Jesus started to bleed that's number one they took a whip and lashed him across his face and when they whipped across his face my Jesus bled again that's number two they placed a cross of 300 pounds on his shoulder and as he dragged it up Calvary's hill it bruised off his shoulder and he started to bleed that's three they drove a spear through his side and when they did they opened up a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's veins that's four they whipped his back with a cat of nine tails until it looked like raw meat that's five they nailed his two hands that's six they nailed his two feet that's seven and I said to him Jesus why did you shed blood from seven different places in your body he said I wanted to make sure that you were covered from the crown of your head down to the sole of your feet when I shed it from my head I was saying I'll anoint your head with oil your cup will run over when I shed it from my face I was saying the embarrassment that should have been yours I'm going to take it on to myself I'll be wounded for your transgression I'll be bruised for your iniquities the chastisement of your peace will be upon me and by my stripes you shall be healed when I shed it from my shoulder I was saying here's my shoulder you can lean on me when I shed it from my side I was saying I'll never leave you nor forsake you when I shed it from my back I was saying go ahead with boldness I got your back when I shed it from my hands I was saying I'll never let you go when I shed it from my feet I was saying I'll walk with you I'll talk with you I'll tell you you are my own so what I brandish today is not third party or liability I've got a comprehensive insurance package from the crown of my head down to the sole of my feet that's why I thank God today for his blood because he was not going to leave me uncovered I gotta get out of your way church I'm 10 minutes behind time but Paul said he became obedient unto death even the death of the cross and then he used the transitional word which is wherefore he said God also hath highly exalted him and given him a name 
Okay, so y'all didn't come to church today. I said, God also had highly exalted him and given Jesus a name which is above every name. That at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. And I came to tell somebody in the building today, there is something about the name of Jesus. And so what Paul is saying is that he had one name Friday evening, but Sunday morning God gave him a brand new name. And when Sunday morning came, God sent Gabriel down, down to planet earth to pop the stone out of its place. And Jesus got up so powerful was his resurrection that some sleeping saints who were dead a long time rose up by Jesus's resurrection they walked into town knocked on the doors of people who had attended their funerals can you imagine hearing the door knock and when you bust it open you see somebody whose funeral you attended and so the living said to the dead excuse me I thought you were dead and the dead said yes we were and the living said how is it that you're here now and the dead said we can't explain it all we're here to tell you is that there was a great getting up morning and in that getting up morning we saw Jesus rose up and we're just here to tell you that God is not dead now he's alive I feel him in my hands I feel him in my feet I feel him all over me come on church don't try to tell me God is dead he woke me up this morning don't try to tell me he's not alive he lives within my soul he opened up my blinded eyes and sent me on my way don't try to tell me God is dead I just talked to him today and because he lives you can face tomorrow because he lives all fear is gone because I know and because you know and because we know that Jesus holds on to the future my life and your life and our lives are worth living just because he lives he lives he lives Christ Jesus lives today he walks with me he talks with me a long life's now away he lives he lives salvation to impart you ask me how I know he lives he lives I said he lives he lives within my soul I'm gonna get up out of bed tomorrow morning oh I'm, a, I'm done I'm done I'm done I'm done I'm done I'm gonna quit y'all I said I'm gonna get up out of bed tomorrow morning and I'm gonna take on anything the devil throws in my way because I know God sent his son they call him Jesus I'm here to tell you today because we have a God who the devil thought that he had him words went out with rapidity he's gone no more will the region be troubled troubled by this man who gives new life to people here and there Paul says Calvary's Hill was not the end of the discussion so when he said wherefore he 
connected Friday evening to Sunday morning. When he said wherefore, he connected my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? He connected that statement to the one that says I am the resurrection and the life. I am he that was dead. When he said wherefore, he connected weeping endure for a night. The joy comes in the morning. I don't know where you live or where you have to go when you leave here on today. I don't know what are the challenges that you didn't tell us about. But I want to let you know. There is a God. There is a Jesus. That lay down his life so that you can have victory. And take it up again. So that he can win that victory for you. And if the truth be told, we're going to go through some stuff. But on my team today is a person that went down into the valley of the shadow of death. On my team, there is a person that put his spirit in the Father's hand, declared it is finished, dropped his head and died. On my team is that person who got up early Sunday morning, rolled up the grave clothes. He wasn't in any rush, he rolled up the grave clothes stuck it to the side open up the drawers of hell and pull out the keys of hell on the grave hitch them onto his side and march out of hell that's the person that's on my team today forgive my english please but if that's person that's on my team, I ain't scared of nothing. I'm not afraid of anything. If that's the person that's on my team, I want to ask you to stand with me in the house today. Yeah. Let's stand. Stand up with me in the house as if to say from your heart. Thank you for your blood. Can I get you to release that in the atmosphere today? Thank you for your blood. Come on, release it in the atmosphere. Throw your head back one time and say thank you. Come on, let's make the courts of heaven ring. Say thank Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your blood. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. My life is worth living. Can we start it at the top, please? God sent his son. I know we gotta go, y'all. They called him came to love, heal and forgive. He bled and died.
crazy enough to just lift both hands in heaven and sing because he lives? Come on, just lift both hands in the here and sing. Come on, lift those hands and sing. Somebody say all fear is gone. Because I know. My life. And life is I want to pray for somebody in the house today. I want to pray for somebody. I want to pray for somebody in the house today. You, you, you came and you heard today that there is still power in the blood and it's sufficient for you. And you've not yet given your life to Christ, but you're here in the building on today. I want to pray. I want to pray with you, even if you're online on today. And you're saying, Pastor, I know I'm watching in the virtual space, but I need you to pray for me. Jump in the chat right now and throw something out. Throw something out. And then in the building, if you're here, I want to pray this prayer for you. You've not yet accepted Christ as Lord and Savior. Stick up your hand like this. We do this every Sabbath. Not yet accepted Christ as Lord and Savior. Every day we do this. God bless you, my brother. God bless you. I see a hand over there. Uh, somebody, I need, I'm going to need some help. God bless you, my brother. Is there another in the house not yet accepted Jesus and you heard his word on today and you know that his blood is still sufficient for you? <clears throat> somebody else in the building, go ahead and shoot up that hand and let me pray for you right now. We've got a few items to cover just shoot up your hand is there one more in the house on today bow your heads church and pray help me pray somebody is struggling at this point in time they want to let go and let god but they're having difficulties pray for them all the devil want to do is to let them leave and not accept christ as lord and savior just shoot up your hands say pastor pray for me i'm struggling man i want to do what is right but it's hard out here in these last days I know Jesus is coming soon and I want to I want to lift a hand for Jesus. Is there somebody else in the building today want to lift a hand for Jesus? I see a hand all the way down the back right there. Somebody help me. God bless you. God bless you all the way over to the back over here. God bless you my sister. God bless you. Thank you so much for your boldness today. Your faith is being rewarded right now as we speak. Praise God for her. Somebody else. I see another hand over there. Come on, help me somebody. Help me, help me, help me in the building as we move. Bow your heads and pray with me, church. Pray. Somebody, somebody want to do this for the cause of Christ in the building today. Just, just pray. Just pray for somebody. Pray, Father, Father. Oh, Father, in the mighty name of your son, Jesus. We thank you for today. We thank you for the power in your blood. We thank you for the folks who are standing up right now because we have received new zeal to go out and trust and believe and hope and hold again not because we're that good but because you are and it is you that have done this for us we claim your promises we claim your sacrifice we claim you as our God all those who have raised their hands in the house today saying, I want to make it in. I know it's late. I know it's difficult, but I want to trust God like the rest of these saints. Been trusting God all of this time. I want to put them into your hands right now. That you circle them, that you enclose them, that you sanctify them, that you justify them. That you do the work that you're doing in even me right now at this stage after so many years you're still working on me to get me ready for that day when we shall see your face coming in the clouds of glory that's how we celebrate you today we tell you thanks we tell you thanks thank you jesus 
thank you so much in the name of Jesus Christ we pray come on put your hands together and bless the name of Jesus come on celebrate celebrate him right where you are I want you to sit for a second sit for a second just sit down sit, sit for a second we're gonna do this real quickly um, I, I know we've used up the time and we went over a little bit today but we're working hard to get this ready I'm gonna ask our uh, deacons and deaconess team to just take up your position real quickly because I know you didn't come just for communion today you came to worship God with your giving come on somebody ought to say amen I know you came to worship God with your giving and we're not going to beg we're not going to trick we're not going to do any of that stuff I personally believe that there are blessings to be had when God's people start being faithful come on say amen and so faithfulness to God watch this very carefully while they're going ahead y'all can go ahead and start collect and then some are working from the back to come forward at this time what I'm here to tell you is that God has some blessings to be released right here at Goshen Temple and these blessings will spill over right all the way over into this community and this community will be here that this is just not another church on a corner street somewhere this community will know that this is literally the the, the, the kingdom of God and so when you're faithful to God what we're doing is we're creating a condition for God to move in our midst come on say amen somebody and so we want to ask you if you're a part of the body of Christ to help us demonstrate the faithfulness in worship of the giving so that we can be blessed by God's grace and his mercies immediately after this is hope is finished we're going to ask another set of our deacons and deaconesses to come forward because we have to collect our benevolent fund on today we've got to collect our benevolent fund today our benevolent fund is going to be right after we finish collecting our tithe and offering on today and so we want you to just sit where you are we're gonna sing a song as soon as they are finished come on would you be free would you be free from your those of you who are online on the screen right now we're demonstrating four different ways how you can bless this ministry by Zelly, by our church's website by the physical location and then by mail in all the information is there on the screen oh wonder working power in the blood of the land Father, we thank you so much for your grace and your mercies and for the faithfulness of your people. We pray, God, that today you will take this faithfulness and move mountains with it, work miracles so that your kingdom can be established where you have set us over. We give you honor, the glory, and the praise. And as you continue to open up the window of heaven and pour us out blessings that we don't have room enough to receive it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. Uh, we're going to have our benediction in a short while, but we have to collect our also this day our benevolent fund. Would you be free from your passion and pride? There is power in the blood, power in the blood. So we're going to give the deacons and deaconesses just a few minutes to come back and then we're going to go ahead and collect our benevolent fund. But let's bless God in singing. If you believe this, come on, sing it out. There is power, power, wonder working power in the love of the land. There is power, power, wonder working power in the precious blood of the land. 
Chris Power. Power, wonder working power in the blood of the land. There is power, power, wonder working power in the precious blood of the land. Would you do service for Jesus, your King? the church say amen let's thank God for this benevolent giving and your hearts that have come to demonstrate how good God is to you father we're thanking you again for the generosity the willingness of your people the sacrifices that have been made for the cause of Christ and again we ask that your blessings be pronounced upon these that your kingdom will be promulgated bless every giver and those who even didn't have to give in Jesus name we pray amen all right let the church say amen Amen. I want you to thank God for our leaders on today thank God let's put our hands together for our elders and let's put our hands together for our deacons and let's put our hands together for our deaconesses and let's put our hands together for our ushers. And let's put our hands together for the audiovisual team. And let's put our hands together for the praise and worship team. And let's put our hands together for our musician. Amen. Praise God. And let's put our hands together for all of you. Amen. We praise God. Praise God. Amen. We're working hard behind the scene. As we continue to pray for those who are struggling on next week. Next week is going to be the 6th of April. I can't even believe that we're going into April already. Sometime during the course of this week on the 27th of March. Uh, which month is we in? March. It is March. Amen. On the 27th. Somebody laughed at me a while ago. On the 27th of March. I completed my two-month anniversary. And, 
and nobody said, Pastor, I'm going to take you out for your two-month anniversary, so I just told my wife to take me out and let's celebrate the goodness of God in the past two months. We're into our third month and it's getting gooder and gooder every day. <laughs> By God's grace and his mercy. So next week is going to be the 6th of um, April. And we're going to be having some special guests, some emissaries, some administrators from the Northeastern Conference to come and share with us that afternoon after lunch. And so plan to be there because they have some discussions to share with us. And we want to be a part of that. The following week is going to be the 14th. And then the next week is going to be the 20th. And we launch our es eschatology two weeks evangelistic revival. I want to see the house of God looking like this every single night. I want to see it. I heard 19 people say, yes, and uh, Pastor, Pastor Langley says, and filled with visitors. And so you have five people in your life and also in your phone book that the God of heaven is desperately trying to save. He's desperately trying to save them. And he can save them because he has saved you. And I always tell myself that if God can save me, God can save anybody in this world. And so I want you to begin to scroll through your phone book right now. And if you know that God is doing a great thing here in Goshen. And if you know that time is wrapping up. And you want the folks that you love to be in heaven with you and with Jesus. Find them and make yourself personally responsible for them being here. When we kick off on Sabbath morning of the 20th by God's grace and his mercies. We're going to go Sabbath morning, Saturday night. Sunday night and we take a break Monday and Tuesday and we come back Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday again and we're going to do it like that. We're going to go hard. We're going to sweat hard. We're going to preach hard. We're going to pray hard in Jesus name and watch what God is going to do. And the only thing I need to know is that I got a church full of people standing up beside me as we give the devil a run. And let him know that when we begin to trust God and put our faith and confidence in him and Jesus step out before us, the rest of it is a wrap in Jesus name. So begin to talk about it. Every time you text somebody something, tell them that, the, for example, if you say, don't go outside, it's raining outside, just put at the bottom PS and the evangelistic series starts on the 20th. Just keep on drumming it, drumming it. And we're going to leave the rest of it up to God. Amen, everybody. Amen. Stand up on your feet and let's celebrate the goodness of God. If you had a wonderful time in the house on today, come on, stand on your feet with us. And we're going to ask Pastor Langley to say our benediction for us on today. And then the elders and myself, we will meet you at the door and tell you thanks for worshiping with us in the beauty of holiness today. God bless you to our online worshipers. We praise God that you came to worship and to celebrate with us today. Please share this link with somebody. If you received any blessing, share it with somebody today so that they can be blessed tomorrow and Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday by God's grace and his mercies. Loving Lord, I pray that the excitement will continue. There is a love germ that is just vibrating all around this place. And as we move from the table, may we continue to sense your presence. Keep us faithful in love with you and your truth until the day comes, and I don't believe it will be too long, when you will be serving the redeemed of all ages. Keep our pastors, and I pray that we will so live that when that day comes, all those that we would have invited to come to the service as it soon will continue. 
we all will be there in the mighty and wonderful name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom be glory. Let all the people say, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Jesus.